So why does Israel engage in such terror? How is it that an innocent people subjected to terrible Nazi holocaust in the Second World War came to implement a similar holocaust in Palestine? The answer to this question lies in the ideology known as Zionism. This ideology was put forward at the end of the 19th century by the Austrian Jewish journalist Theodor Herzl. Zionism was a nation-state ideology which aimed at the foundation of an independent Jewish state. The reason for this depended on the colonialist and social Darwinist theories which dominated 19th century Europe. According to these theories, the industrialized nations of the West had the right to colonize less developed nations. This was envisioned as a natural result of the concept of the struggle for survival between nations predicted by Darwinism. The Jews who put forward the idea of Zionism approved of this 19th century European error and constructed their own ideologies in the light of it. That is why racism became a part of Zionist ideology. These words by the famous Israeli leader Isaac Shamir about the Palestinian people are an open expression of this racism. It is unacceptable that nations made up of people who have only just come down from the trees should take themselves for world leaders. How can such primitive beings have an opinion of their own? Manahem Begin, who took part in bloody terrorist attacks in the 1940s and later became Prime Minister of Israel, had no compunctions about referring to the Palestinians as two-legged animals. Radical Zionists were only able to reconcile their consciences with this slaughter by denying that the Palestinians were human. It is this racist ideology that is responsible for the oppression that has gone on in Palestinian lands for the last half century. At the same time, the Zionists employ such concepts from Judaism as the chosen people and the promised land. This, however, is not a sincere religious devotion. On the contrary, Judaism, a divine religion, has become a vehicle for Zionism, a worldly ideology. The problem is not Judaism and the Jews, but rather Zionism and the Zionists. The relationship between Zionism and Judaism has never been a realistic one. Those who put forward the ideology of Zionism were people who had nothing to do with religion. Max Nordau, the second important movement leader after Herzl, was a confirmed atheist. Most devout Jews regarded Zionism as an anti-religious ideology and rejected it. Devout Jews still regard Zionism in those terms today. Someone walking about in devout areas of Jerusalem can see slogans written up to the effect that Judaism and Zionism are diametrically opposed. These devout Jews oppose Zionism. They carry slogans protesting the Zionist Israeli policy. This image is of Jews protesting against Israel's Sabra and Shatila massacres in 1982. The placards they carry reveal the Zionist violence.
All of this show that there is a huge gulf between Israeli terror and Judaism. In fact, it is quite impossible for a sincere, devout Jew to oppress other peoples. Although the basis of the religion, the Torah, has become interspersed with human words and corrupted since its revelation, it nevertheless commands peace and justice between people. For these reasons, devout Jews criticize Israeli terror as a violation of the Torah. One of these is Britain's chief rabbi, Professor Jonathan Sachs, who criticized the way that Israeli policy is treated as equivalent to Judaism in a statement he made in 2002. There are things that happen on a daily basis which makes me feel very uncomfortable as a Jew, he said. Even some Israeli soldiers oppose the government's harsh policies. In 2002, some 250 Israeli soldiers refused to serve in the occupied territories, saying, we do not want to attack innocent people. What kind of attitude should Muslims adopt in the face of the Israeli terror? Just like in his everyday life, every Muslim must behave in accordance with Quranic values in extraordinary situations such as war and exile. In the Quran, God calls on believers to bring peace and tolerance to the world. He commands people to behave with justice, regardless of race, language, or creed. For that reason, it is out of the question for Muslims to feel hostility towards Jews because of their religion and beliefs. According to the Quran, the Jews are one of the peoples of the book. In other words, people who believe in the revelations of God. The attitude a Muslim must adopt towards the people of the book is one of justice, tolerance, and kindness. Killing a person for no reason is one of the greatest sins in the Quran. Our prophet also warned his commanders not to harm civilians. In recent years, however, some Palestinians have been carrying out suicide attacks in populated areas, as a result of which innocent and defenseless women, children, and the elderly 